Uh, so my journey is an interesting one. Um, we, you know, when you look at the Silicon Valley ecosystem, where I actually have uh, spent the bulk of my initial career, um, always been in deep tech. Um, so from 97 all the way to um, 2009, I was literally groomed from um, Silicon Valley. And then one of the startups that I was at, we got acquired by uh, Computer Associates. CA Technologies in 2006, and then I moved into um, this Asia Pacific role and I got relocated to help them grow and, and turn around the business in Asia Pacific. And that started my turnaround career, uh, fortunately or unfortunately. Uh, six months after I landed in, in Singapore from San Francisco, I, I was um, literally relocated to Japan right away. And so that I didn't even really get acquainted with Singapore yet in 2009. And I've been tasked to go and firefight and turn around the business in Japan. So I spent almost two years there, um, and that kind of catapulted my my career with CA. And then I later on moved back to Singapore and you know, got this global role, um, as well as this regional role in, in managing the cloud and automation business. And then I just got itchy feet again, and and this came calling. Uh, it was an unconventional way to start a company i was actually hired in to turn around a b2c loyalty app this was in late 2014 and then when i came in realized that the business is not really uh, sustainable at this current trajectory and i had to make a proposal to the board to turn around the company and transition and pivot uh, my idea was completely different, 180 degrees from what it was a B2C. So now we're an enterprise SaaS platform. Four years later, since 2016's pivot, um, a lot of the old legacy business has been sunset and also uh, you know, transitioned over. Had to let go of almost all my old employees, rebuilt the team from scratch. And so a very different uh, journey. And now I'm the single founder uh, of this new company that I transformed. You know, Perks Technology has transformed into a new category creating uh, SaaS platform called Lifestyle Marketing. And what we do from a, a solutioning standpoint is we help traditional enterprises like banks, telcos, insurance, uh, retail essential brands to, you know, think through, uh, tr you know, transitioning their traditional transient and transactional uh, models to more engaging and more experiential uh, brands. And so when you connect with customers uh, today in the digital and mobile first economy, you have to work with your customers in real time. You have to delight them and instantly gratify them in real time. And unfortunately, we see traditional enterprises functioning in their very complacent model or manner. And most of them, you know, due to COVID, fortunately for us, have accelerated the digital transformation because they have no other option, right? So there's no branch banking. There is no going into your telco branch and getting your phone fixed or getting a new SIM card. There's all these different ways to now transform infrastructure, transform consumer engagement, servicing, everything. And so, but more importantly, we see the evolution of traditional brands now all trying to become a super app. They're all trying to become a lifestyle marketplace and leaving their core. So what we've seen in the recent uh, 12 months is an acceleration of these companies in Asia, all because of fintech, mobile first and super apps. So making the competitive landscapes extremely gray. So you have telcos wanting to get into the you know, fintech space, telcos wanting to get into commerce, banks want to get into re you know, like you can see all of that. And, you know, case in point in India, Reliance Geo is being one of those, right? <laughs> They're like becoming a massive super app or a 10 cent of Asia now or of India. And so you see the evolutions uh, right in front of your eyes and faster and more accelerated. I'm more interested in soft skills. The hard skills are very easy to learn and to be trained on uh, and to acquire. Uh, but if you think about soft skills, what are soft skills? 
communication, effective communication. How do you influence people? Uh, you know, how do you mobilize a team and collaborate uh, more effectively? Uh, how do you, you know, solve a problem more creatively? So this whole critical thinking and creative thinking is extremely lacking uh, in certain sectors. And we are trying to now, you know, with even our own talent acquisition, um, it's not really the hard skill that I'm trying to hire for. It's great that they have that domain expertise and they, they have certain trainings, but we're, what we're looking for is what is the mix and match of core values as well as the soft skills part, you know, the attitude and all of the different aspects of um, solving critical situations. We are all coming from all walks of life. And even with our company here of about 60 people, we have over 25 nationalities. If you think about managing people from a very similar culture, but if you're bringing people from all walks of life in different countries and you know the hub is here, it's extremely different um, to think about how do you communicate, how do you solve some you know human people culture issues versus a homogenous environment like India, China, you know, even Indonesia, it's very similar in culture. But now if you bring in 25 nationalities under one small roof, how do you effectively communicate and solve problems with velocity and ease? <laughs> so that's the learning is to be much more patient, um, manage problems with compassion and empathy and communicate and, and discuss openly. So radical candor and transparency is part of my culture as well as part of the, the core uh, values of uh, perks. And so we try to over communicate when you do that um, and then communicate without feeling judged. Um, then we give them the safety net to actually voice the concerns and just solve problems much faster. Secondly is don't be afraid to ask for help. And I think in the Asian culture, the minute we actually ask for help, it's deemed as vulnerable, it's deemed as you're not an expert and it's weakness. And so I think uh, for us, you know, brought up from the West side, um, the West always ask, you know, and scream louder than, you know, pretend you know things. And you know, so it's just like a complete opposite culture. Um, here it's like, I need to be the best in my domain before I even, you know, um, you know, scream loudly, it's not necessary. I think that whole cultural dynamics and shift uh, is an interesting learning for me as well. The third one is leverage your network. Leverage uh, mentorship to the best of your ability. You cannot do it alone. And so how to be creative about, about building your own social network, your professional network, as well as uh, a mentorship ecosystem is extremely important in this uh, environment. I think throughout, um, I can see also in the Asian culture, it was not really um, front and center to seek for coaching and guidance so publicly or so uh, easily. And so so we're trying to actually now advise and coach the next generation to be not afraid to ask for advice and, and to learn from the experts.